Okay, so hello everyone. Um, I have the pleasure of being here with Sue Hunt, who's Director of Strategic Programmes at LOCOG. Thank you, Sue. Hello there. So, just want to talk to you today about LOCOG and, um, and your role at LOCOG. Mm -hmm. So, LOCOG's obviously against a very tight deadline. We've got the uh, Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games happening in 2012. So, how do you balance that deadline in your job with the strategic programmes and, and also, you know, um, enforcing inclusion and diversity at LOCOG? Well. Yeah, well, so I, my role is, is a very broad and diverse role in itself, so I have quite a different set of responsibilities to balance, and a lot of different types of people that are in my team, and as you rightly say, we've got an immovable deadline, so we're very focused on delivering to 27th of July 2012. Um, but what's really exciting about the role is the fact that you do have that immovable deadline, and you're really focused on delivering. I really truly believe that having a fixed deadline, the 27th of July 2012 for the start of the Games is really beneficial in terms of what we're trying to achieve in terms of diversity. I think it, it, it gets you focused on the end date, but it also, you don't have the opportunity of time to just let things drift. It's yeah. an enabler to making things, mm. you know, people focus on getting things done. So I, I think that's been a huge benefit to us rather than something that has dissuaded us from it considering all aspects of inclusion and diversity. When we think about inclus uh, inclusion and diversity, we think about three main areas. We think about the need to do it. Yeah. We fully recognize across all levels of the organization the need to do it. Yeah. Secondly, leadership. You need leadership to do it. Mm. And we've got focus on inclusion and diversity right the way through the organization from the top all the way down. And then thirdly, it's about delivering it. So evidence that you're actually delivering it. And we've got so many examples of delivering it already in terms of looking at the, the workforce that we have in place, our plans to recruit the rest of the workforce, but also tangible things like, for example, the other day I was getting in the lift and I was hijacked to go downstairs by a transport team to go and look at the new bus that we've just created to transport at least six people in wheelchairs alongside able-bodied people to accompany them for the Olympics mm -hmm. and the Paralympics. I think that's just you know, inclusion and diversity in action for the game. But diversity in terms of six main strands, and we, we actually do track um, statistics against each of those main strands. Um, and so what are they? Their age, their gender, it's um, um, what we call BAMI, the, the Black Asian um, Minority Ethnic Group, um, the LGBT group, which is lesbian, gay, bis bisexual, transgender group, um, yeah, hey, thank you. Yeah. You're going to have to edit this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we look at all of those six yeah, main strands. Important inclusion and diversity is to uh, local and the opportunity to work in, in this diverse environment. Is there anything that you're going to take on um, in your career from working in such an environment? Definitely. Um, I think it's the fact that I've never experienced working in, in such a diverse environment as this, in terms of the backgrounds people come from, the experiences they have, and also the broad spectrum of age groups that we have. I think that the thing that has really struck me is the value you can get from working with very young people. We have a brilliant program here at LOCOG which brings in people straight from school to work on, on, alongside us in the games. And I think we've learnt so much just from seeing things through their lens yeah. and getting their experiences. And I think we've benefited at all levels in our organisation of having young people and young ambassadors uh, giving us that contribution. So that's something I'd like to take forward. Mm. So what is it that the young people have brought into mm. this organisation exactly? Well, it's just a, a freshness uh, and, uh, of how you look at things and you know, the perspective of what a young person is looking for. Because what we're trying to do here, particularly at LOCOG, is inspire young people to get involved in sport longer term and, and get involved in, 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 in all aspects of what we've talked about in terms of diversity and sustainability. And so you've got to make it attractive to them. And, and so to make it attractive to them, you've got to understand what it is that they, they want to, you know, they, they feel they would benefit from uh, being involved with this and, 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 and what excites them. So that's why I think uh, it's really valuable to have them sitting alongside us. And what does it involve being accountable, accountable for one of these groups? I mean, is it about recruitment or is it about... Uh, well, it's about championing the cause, really, and deciding what it is that we're going to use the opportunity of having the Olympic and Paralympic Games to help us with that particular area of diversity. 
in the case of the strand that I'm championing, we decided that our big focus should be uh, combating homophobia in sport. And so that has been our, our focus, and we're, we're, we're working with uh, many of the sort of sporting organisations to achieve that, and also with the central government. Hmm. Yeah. That's fantastic. Real lasting legacy, that is. Should be. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, and I think in terms of sustainability, do you see sustainability being a part of IND in terms of the skills and the social aspect and mm -hmm. education? And IND yeah. can very much always be something around ethnicity, age, that type of thing. Yeah. I think sustainability is a key part of it because that's how you, if you're thinking about skill set and building skill set and education, that's how you're kind of doing it from the roots up, not just leadership down type thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, as you know, um, when we think about sustainability, we think about it in terms of more than the green agenda. We yes. think about inclusion within it, yes. and also other aspects like healthy living, etc. Um, so it's quite interesting because we have diversity and inclusion as part of sustainability, and also a focus within diversity and inclusion on a lasting legacy and sustainability. Yeah. There. Um, so yeah, I think it works. We, we, we do focus on it in, in both of those dimensions. Um, but what I think we really focus on when it comes to inclusion uh, and diversity there is thinking about people and thinking about what can we do for people. And that um, motto that I said before in terms of um, using the games to inspire lasting change applies there. And it's about giving people more opportunities, giving more people more yeah. skills and giving people the opportunity to have jobs that have never had jobs before. So that's a big focus um, for us. Yeah. And then the, the lasting impact yeah. of uh, you know being able to use the facilities afterwards. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I was reading in your inclusion and diversity pack about the number of people who are involved in sports in London. You're hoping to in increase those figures. So there's a, almost a, a short-term impact and also a, a longer term as well with, with the effects within people as well. Yeah. Well, we very much hope it lives on beyond <laughs> the games, and we. Local is doing everything it can to enable the lasting legacy beyond. Uh, about um, how you're driving inclusion diversity uh, from a leadership perspective. So yep. just elaborating on that just a little bit, maybe some yeah. examples. I mean, often we talk about what, what's the games going to achieve, and one of the mottos we have is uh, use the games to inspire lasting change. And uh, one of the things we wanted to do under that is really inspire people to think about diversity and leadership. And we had the great opportunity, it was just unbelievable, to have Archbishop Desmond Tutu here. Oh, wow. And he talked about this, and he got us all to sign up wow. to a leadership pledge, and this I'm very that's proud awesome. to say, that's mine. Wow. <laughs> and does everyone have one of these? Uh, everyone that's wanted to sign up to it, and I'm, I'm pleased to say that I think all of the directors and the heads of the departments in local signed up to this pledge. That's fantastic. And it has it very specifically in there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, lovely. And how do, how do all leaders take on inclusion and diversity as part of their day job? Is it, is it metrics that you're all accountable and, and responsible for? Yeah. Is it every department um, has the statistics that I described earlier in terms of the target areas. Right. So we all get reports back and, and we know how our departments are doing. Mm -hmm. And we're very much held to account through, through our, um, our sort of assessment, really, in our sort of, um, what do you call it? Performance review. Performance yeah. So um, each department will be held accountable to that, and each um, leader will be held accountable to it in their performance reviews. Uh, just on the point of accountability, you outline the six areas before, like gender and yeah. age, and so is someone accountable for each area? Yeah. A, a, another nice thing about the way we think about leadership, we, we think about it in terms of managing your own functional areas, but also in terms of managing the the focus on each of those six strands. I'm personally responsible for championing the, the LGBT group, uh -huh. and other directors are responsible for different aspects. So that's another way of sort of demonstrating our leadership throughout.